All right, y'all. So today I'm going to teach y'all how to make your own ferric chloride at home for way cheaper than you can get it from anywhere else. Uh, the reason that I am making it today is because, uh, well, frankly, I can't get it anywhere near me and shipping times around this time of year is absolutely terrible to try to get anything in any quick time. So without any further ado, let me show you the ingredients that you need to make your own ferric chloride at home as long as you do it safely. All right, y'all, so to make ferric chloride, you're gonna need three things, excluding your containers. You're gonna need a mu muriatic acid, which is just a less intense version of hydrochloric acid, it's cut with water. Um, you're gonna need steel wool. I like four-aught steel wool, it's just finer, and it's a lot easier to use. Uh, I use one and a half bunches of steel wool, it comes in the package, you make it very fibrous, for 450 milliliters of muriatic acid. You will let that sit overnight and let the muriatic really break down the steel wool before coming out the next day and adding 900 milliliters of two or 3% hydrogen peroxide. I like the two or 3% because it seems to get a much better mix whenever you actually mix everything together. Um, and then you let it sit, you should have a great color change. It should go from a greenish color to a nice brown. And then you'll be ready to etch from there. It will make 50-50 mix ratio, so a one-to-one -one ratio of ferric chloride to water. You'll need to cut it from there because that aggressive of a mix will attack your nickel steel instead of just attacking your uh, carbon steel. So. Let's uh, hop into mixing everything together, and then I'll show y'all that it does, in fact, etch our Damascus. So, before you do this, you will need a pair of safety glasses and a mask of some kind, because this is some pretty mean stuff. You really don't want to breathe any of these fumes in, and it will irritate the crap out of your eyes. You can wear gloves if you want to, but it's not 100% necessary because you should not be getting any of it on your hands if you do this properly. So, take care, be safe, and let's... uh. Let's mix some stuff together. All right, <clears throat> howdy everybody. So what we're gonna be doing today is making some ferric chloride. Ferric chloride is the acid solution that blacksmiths and bladesmiths use to etch their Damascus blades, um, carbon steel Damascus blades in particular. So what I've got here in this dirty nasty bottle is uh, a solution of ferrous chloride now. Um, it is 450 milliliters of muriatic acid and or roughly 450 milliliters of muriatic acid and a bundle and a half of four aught steel wool. Now what I'll do is I will add it to my other container and then I will add 900 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. This will create an exothermic reaction and it should yield me a solution of ferric chloride that I can then etch my Damascus blades in. So, uh, let's get to mixing some stuff up. All right, everybody. So, with this stuff, you want to add your acid first and then add your peroxide to the acid. Now, I am wearing proper filtration and eye protection. Uh, and you want to add just a little bit of your peroxide at a time. And as you can see, immediately we're getting a color change. And this will be an exothermic reaction. Uh, it'll get really hot and I'll, I'll take a temperature test here in a minute. And you just wanna add little bits at a time until you add the entire bottle of peroxide. So let me, let me get a temperature test going. All right, so we are reading 78 degrees currently. It is not 78 degrees outside, but that is what we're reading. And I'm just going to keep adding this peroxide. That right there should be pretty dang good. 
All right. So I will let this go and just sit for a little bit and uh, we'll come back and I'll show y'all that it does etch Damascus. All right, y'all. So this here is an unetched piece of Damascus and this is my concentrated ferric chloride. I'll just show y'all that it does in fact bring out the pattern in here. And just like that, there's a pattern. So there you go. That's how you make ferric chloride, y'all. Everybody, I hope y'all found the video informative. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And if you did, drop a follow, subscribe, like, share, comment, whatever you want to do. Appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next one. We're going to be finishing up that sword here in a couple days. So I'll see y'all in the next video. Stay safe, stay sharp.